finally getting into the hard stuff, folks. We are. And by that, I mean the morphine. And maybe down the road, we'll even cover an article on cocaine. <laughs> so, like I said, the hard stuff. All right, so, um, oh, I don't know. There's my tiny little thing. There's my tiny little thing. There happens to be a mini-me popping up in here. I'm going to do my best to ignore this thing, but counter control is an issue. So, we've been dealing with this for a while, so I'm currently not going to attend to it in any way, shape, or form that I can possibly attend to it. Is that working? You sure? You're looking at it like it's not, and I'm concerned. <laughs> All right, so... All right, so anyway, let's try this again. <clears throat> we're going to switch gears a little bit today, and we're going to go over to some non-human stuff, uh, which, if you understand my background, non-human stuff is kind of cool. Uh, I, I, I love EAP. I love EAP with humans or EAP without humans. I love our field uh, because it allows us to look at other species and discover principles. It's not the weirdest sound in my ear discover principles and all sorts of things that uh, can then be generalized into other species, specifically, and hopefully humans, all right, if we get into the applied behavior analytic literature, um, which is mighty presumptuous. Applied behavior analysis doesn't have to be about humans. It's about solving problems using behavior analytic techniques, right? And the science behind behavior analysis, it's, 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 it doesn't have to be human. <clears throat> Go look at this. There's an article over here somewhere that's really cool stuff about non-humans but applied work and anyway so i'm getting off on a tangent because this is actually a really quick article to talk about um so the article itself is the um shepherd siegel article um from 1975 that would be evidence from rats that morphine tolerance is a learned response and i'm sure he said it with that tone as he wrote it <laughs> um from the morphine from the morphine <laughs> no wait a minute that's cocaine that's a different article oh morphine <laughs> Sorry. Ah, pizza. All right. So what do we got? We got um, essentially Siegel did something slightly different where he looked at what are the things that condition during drug administration and what things lead to tolerance because the Straight up physiological interpretation of tolerance is that you take a drug, it becomes, you take a drug, you take a drug, each time you take a drug, it becomes less and less effective. You need more and more of the drug in order for it to be effective and you get the high, blah, 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 and all these funny things, but that completely ignores anything about the environment and anything about classical conditioning. And Shepard Siegel was like, oh, hell no. We are going to listen to the environment, we're going to study this world, and we're going to find out if conditioning happens in the environment. And the answer is yes, it does. So, we are looking at rats. Four groups, we're not gonna go through them all. You have an article for that, but here's the thing. So um, the, the basic assumption was that the administration of the drug, right? While you're administering the drug and the immediate impact that that drug has on your body is the unconditioned stimulus. So if I put morphine, if I inject some morphine, all right? I don't know how to do that. Maybe it's that way. I don't know, I've never done it. So, okay, so I'm gonna inject some morphine. I don't even have a syringe. Um, so glad you're not a doctor. I know. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Such a kind response. So, if I inject some morphine, all right, um, it's not the injection, the feeling here of the needle poke or whatever that's the issue. It's when the drug itself interacts with my physiology, that is an unconditioned stimulus. So, what Siegel then says is that what about everything else that happened immediately prior to that? For example, sticking the needle in. Or if I'm in the same location every single time. The administration piece itself, that's an environmental stimulus. So I wonder what would happen if we discover, or I want, he's wondering how much of that environment around the, uh, the U.S. actually becomes a CS. Now, we have to go into a completely sidestep literature here, so bear with me for just a moment um, in order to understand what they're looking at. We have to look at what the compensatory condition response is. So a CR is just a condition response, right? But oftentimes with drugs and other types of, and some other stimuli, you get a compensatory response. And this article goes over a bunch of the literature. I'm not going to go over all of it. But the point is, is that it prepares the organism for what's about to come. So a compensatory response would be if I take a drug that increases my heart rate. The compensatory response would be right before I administer the drug, my heart rate would go down. 
the UN or the UR, the unconditional response to the stimulus itself, is the heart rate going up. Okay, so that so that's normal, right? So the body prepares for that through the conditioning. Bye, kid. See ya. I will pop it later. Okay. Thank you. Was it a warning? Yes. Okay. All right. So now that she's we bored her with CCRs, and by that she actually likes CCR, just not CCRs. Credence Clearwater Revival. By the way, that's the way I always remember these. I was like, these are really cool, just like the band. <laughs> and I was like, even to this day, every time I see CCR, I immediately think of both the band and um, <clears throat> these effects, and subsequently the Siegel article. And then I think about the band and the, the drug related themes and the music, and it all comes together, and they didn't choose these on accident, I don't think. So, anyway. In 75, <laughs> like, it all goes together, man. I swear to God. All right, you're back. And you're better than ever. It's Avery, too, with an open water bottle. You broke your water bottle. Okay, you're going to have to, like, I can fix that, but you're going to have to wait a little bit. So it's spinning around 180 degrees. There you go. Oh, it's all toasted. All right, I'll fix that later. I have to talk about this article, sweetie. Unless you want to. No, I hate articles. <laughs> I hate articles. Right. Okay. So, oh, it's a it's a day. So the compensatory condition response, right? So we're back to this whole. In, does the environment elicit a response that helps control for the administration or the effects of the drug itself? And the answer is it does. So let's look at what Siegel was talking about, though. Was are there? Uh, uh, what is it in the environment that does that? So he's got rats. There are a bunch of them, and we're going to teach these rats to self-administer um, morphine. Or no, sorry, not self-administer. That's the other article. He's going to administer morphine, and you test the analgesic response. You need me to shut that? Is that bothering you? Hold on, folks. I need to shut the door. <laughs> or he'll shut the door and make the camera. Oh, I think we got around it. All right. Um, so we got four groups of rats. We don't really have to go through all the detail. But here's what it is. So analgesic response, right? So if I take morphine, right, and I make this thing hot, all right, so it's a hot plate. And so I, I inject my morphine, and then I wait some time. <laughs> and I wait a certain amount of time in order for their morphine to have an effect. I put my paw on here. If this is hot, then we would have the paw, the 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 hot plate paw latency, the paw withdrawal latency response, whatever they call it. Here's the point: is oh, it's the latent latency of the paw lick response. So, as my paw sits on this hot plate, um, it's going to take me a little while. To go, oh, that's too much. I'm going to pull. I'm going to lick my paw. All right. I'm going to do it again. So the time from the moment that you put me on the hot plate till I lick my paw, hand, whatever. Um, that is a measure of the effectiveness of the drug because this is hot, all right? So I'm going to pull my paw, and rats, when they when they pull it, and something's hot, they pull their paw off and they lick it and they put it back down and they lift this one and they kind of do that back and forth. It's not just in rats, other species do it too. It's really cool. So the, the more effective the more effective that the drug is, the longer they'll sit there. Uh, whatever, dude. Life is so good. Oh, it's getting a little warm, man. All right, so, you know, that sort of thing. Okay, well, what you find out is that if you continually get the, the rat to admin, if you continually continually administer the drug in the same environment under the same context and all these fun little things um, with all sorts of controls built in about whether or not they had experience with the hot plate, whether or not it was a cold plate, and all these other things that you can read in the article, you find out really quickly that the environment itself helps create tolerance. So the environment predicts that this is going to happen, and the or it helps the organism learn that this is going to happen, and the analgesic response decreases. In other words, the more I do these trials, so I do this, and if I leave my hand on there for a while, and before I lick it, right, to cool it off, I put it back on, now that I do this again in the next set of trials, right, I'm going to pull it off quicker, even though it's the exact same amount of the drug. And they controlled for whether or not it was in the environment and the number of drug administrations that they had and they did it, they reversed this stuff in a sense, they did it, so they did it between subjects and they did it within subjects. And the answer is really, really straightforward. That, not the answer, the, the result of the study is really straightforward, but groundbreaking in that you develop tolerance to a drug, not just based on the drug itself. You develop tolerance to drug based on environmental cues. In this particular article, we're literally talking about classical conditioning type cues, CCRs, CRs, whatever you want to look at, uh, depending on the stuff. Now, there's more detail, obviously. This is a very short little thing. Um, but it was, 
it's groundbreaking. It's really cool. And it was 75 and it's led to some effects, right? Like you can actually design interventions based on this type of information. Now, I am going to put a little word of caution in here. Caution, caution. We have developed interventions based on this stuff and they have not been highly effective. So I don't want to send you off with this message that this is the way you solve drug tolerance. You know, <laughs> it's not the point. The point is, is that when you look at um, tolerance itself, there are lots of factors that are involved. Siegel identified one of those factors, and we should probably be cognizant of that if we're trying to do applied work with regard to drug seeking behavior and those things. Okay, so it's not an end all be all as the literature since has has exposed um, and feel free to find some references in fact there's a couple references about it in the uh kearns at all study 2005 so kearns at all 2005 take a look at that for some more information about why this treatments based on this stuff don't completely work so beside the point rats cool stuff totally different effects with regard to drugs um, than what you might expect so don't do morphine